seven pounds, dear. No, I'll take it. You're supposed to haggle, love. Well, I like it. Tell you what, let's call it four fifty. That doesn't seem enough. Make me an offer. Six quid. Call it five, and that's my last word. Five it is. <laughs> All I'm asking you to do is to put yourself in their place. Is that the nicking stuff from the stalls on a regular basis? Oh, it's good stuff, a lot of it, too. There's always some gems amongst the dross. Frank, there's always going to be thieving from street markets. Yeah. What up, Rabbi? Mashalom, ha? Yeah, well, they've asked us because they don't want to get involved with the law. Well, I suppose we are, Sammy. Well, first off, you need a diversion. Diversion? Right, gotcha. Whatever happened to Mars Piano? I always meant to ask. Well, she had it in a flat in Mayfair, so it probably ended up in a skip. Then you got to find something to put the stuff in without people getting suspicious. Mm. Hello, Isaac. What have you got in that, Joanna? Something or nothing, eh? Just you watch. He's not going to get a gig. Oh, he's better than some we booked. Yes. I'd rather be trapped in a lift with two vagrant winos and a cockney darts player. So there's still hope. No, Pippin, you're not having one. Last woman, Dolly, I bought you. What did you do? You only bloody ate it, didn't you? Go on, give the matter a little willy, Dolly. Where's your heart? He's only going to go and eat it. Quiet word. Who talking to me? It's either me or the police. Now, you see that girl there? She's a detective. I've only got to shout. Yeah, well, you just shout if you like, because I've done nothing wrong. Problems, boss? Maybe I'll be doing the shouting for help. You're right about that. John Joe, take him back to the club. Let's go ahead. And, uh, I'll keep the helmet. There's a store selling gingerbread dolls in Spice Lane. No, it's only the woolly ones he likes. Come on. How's that dog gonna get on when its mum's in Holloway? What are you on about? Very clever. Very skillful. The artful dodges and pipping. Still the only keeping the dogs home about seven days before it's good night, doggy. He's got his name on his collar, he's under control. Let's go have a word with your boyfriend.
What's it worth, Joe? Hmm. A good pace imitation of a sapphire cluster. Well set. 22 card gold chain. Man, uptown you get 60 to 70 quid for this. How much you want for it? No, no, no. That toe rag lifted it from Jamaica Street Market. Shame on you, boy. We're gonna have to call the policeman for you. It's not a laughing matter. The market's on the up. Time was, you couldn't get out in there with tat. What do you want? Are you nicking our stuff? Your stuff? Yeah. Tom was just about to pay for that before you walked him away. You bought it for me, didn't you, Tom? Yeah. Seventy quid, you said. That's daylight bleeding robbery, that is. This is my manor. Have you heard of the Paradise Club mob? Should we have? We're very nasty people. Tell them, John Joe. Very nasty. Heavy, you might say. <laughs> Peter Noonan tried to move in. Gang war. Major. He failed. Phil, the worst tasker, tried to move cocaine on my territory. He fell off the top of a high-rise building. Nasty fall. Some say... He was pushed. Give it back. Do you know what the law means by considerations? I ain't never been nicked, so the answer is no. What the man means is... Cough up the lot, and we won't send a word. A lot of valuable stuff has gone missing from that market in the past three weeks. Well, we didn't do it all. There's a couple of other thieves that work the market on a Friday. A blondie and the grasshopper? Friends of mine, down on their luck. We got about 400 quid, that's all. We spent it on the squat, it needed everything doing to it. Yeah, dog food. Don't ever work my manner again, understand? We could give back about 30 quid. It's his dull money. Get out of here. I don't want to see you back. And you. Thanks a lot. What's up? Just Danny keeps on going on about sending the kids off to boarding school. Oh, they're too young and you'd be lost in that big house all the time. Well, I mean, if they were 13 or something, but no, I just don't think it's right. Mm. What do they feel about it? It's a man that thinks it would be like Hollywood Eye. Oh. I think Terry's a bit offended, but he just wants to please his dad. Mm. See, Danny means well. He just wants his kids to have every advantage. When we were young, we were robbing telephone boxes. Come on, baby, make up your mind. I'll take you to your paradise. Where we can sit and dream. The rest is between you and me. It don't matter if nothing ain't right. Still take you to your paradise. Where we can sit and dream. so-called private security firm, aren't you? There's nothing so-called about it at all, mate. It's licensed, it's legal, I keep records, I pay taxes, and it's VAT registered. DMB Security. Unlimited. What's your DMB for? Donner and Blitzen, as in... Oh, yeah, I know, as in thunder and lightning. Which is presumably what strikes your clients when they don't want to be protected. Frank, it is not a protection racket. Hmm. How did you get on to those two kids? It's like I told you, first off, you have to have a diversion. Uh, that'll be the dog. Then you have to find something to put the stuff in so people don't get suspicious. The motorcycle helmet. Except he didn't have a motorcycle. He could have been round the corner. Nah. I saw him last week getting on a bus in Trinidad Road, and I thought it was funny then. You know, you could have been a detective. Nah. I can't work after three pints. This face is unknown. 
parabolic microfilm from Tech Branch is less than useless. Unknown. They drank some wine, talked and laughed. Not yet an offence. Carrillo showed our friends some Polaroids. Then this chap left. End of report. It's Ronnie Richlove. Oh, sigh of relief. One of the train robbers who never made it up the steps. Ah. His wife Delia runs a health farm in Surrey. Ronnie lives in Spain. In some style. Come in. I feel so stupid. Talking ancient history, DC Spink. I feel so old. Senor Ricardo Carrillo. International jewel thief. Flies in from Argentina for a meet with one of the stars of Britain's first big caper. Maybe they're planning a job in Spain. I mean, presumably this wasn't a social occasion. Uh, there's something wrong, sir. Tilly, I'm, uh, I'm having trouble with the firm that owns that taxi you totaled. Legal departments using phrases like internal inquiry with you in the ducking stool. I was in hot pursuit. A major crime had just been committed. And it doesn't help that you were in a different department at the time. I mean, this is really down a drug squad. They couldn't transfer me quick enough. And it didn't help that the commissioner's wife was in the back. I sent her flowers. It was only a sprained ankle. This taxi business isn't going to go away, is it? Sir. Are you trying to say I'm suspended? Get down to Delia Rich's health farm. See if Ron is hanging around. Oh, and Tilly. Yes, sir. Take a driver. Thanks very much. If you spend more time looking after your stock rather than looking at young girls' legs, you wouldn't lose the gear, right? I know. Okay. Harry was pleased to get it back, wasn't he? Please, the police were involved. Half of his gear's nicked anyway. Hey, Felix. Oh, like so there, Frank. I hear you two called the couple that have been stealing from the stalls. Oh, it's down to Danny, really. Well, it takes one to know one. Oh, going in the antique book business, are we, Rabbi? No, not really. From Miss Curtis, actually. She's selling off a few books to need some shelf space. Look, I'm fascinated by this robbery from the stalls. Was it really experience that led you to them? Well, once Frank had outlined the problem, there were only one or two ways he could have done it. He's selling himself short, Felix. Showed considerable power to deduction and observation. See ya. Um, would you... Would you two gentlemen do me a favour? A lady I know has a problem. She's asked me to find her a private detective. Well, frankly, I don't know any. And she definitely does not want the police involved. Rabbi, with all due respect, I'm a very busy man. Good deeds are his department. All I'm trying to do is make an honest living. She mentioned 600 a day plus expenses. We'll take it. We? At DMB Security. We usually book well in advance. We were lucky we had that cancellation. Why the sudden rush? Broken romance. Well, doomed, actually. I just have to get some space. Oh, bless me, was I ever so young. So, where did you hear about us? A girl at Ambrose's club in Chelsea. You know it? Not offhand. She's a model, works part-time behind the bar. Ex-girlfriend of that famous actor. Um, the one in the airline commercial. Oh, the one with the parrots. Melanie something. Um... I just want a general tone-up. Which box do I take? Here, let me do it for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you want to lose weight? No, you don't need to. Special program of relaxation and exercise. 700 pounds for four days. 700 pounds? You feel like a million dollars once we got rid of all the toxins. Give yourself a treat. Why not? Ah, Peter. Peter, this is Miss Elmore. Hi. Hi. We start off with a personal assessment for you, and then once we've got all the facts and figures, we work out the best system for you to follow. Peter will show you round, and he'll carry out your assessment programme. So what do you do, Miss Elmore? Journalist. 
freelance. Ah, here to expose us, are you? No, but uh, if I can get you into Vogue, do I get a discount? <laughs> Peter? Miss Elmore's here to unwind. Give her a break. Thanks. in under the name of Muller. U.S. passport. Hotel detectives Bill Campbell. He got shot down in Leytonstone in that pawn shop siege. We'll be getting Muller's prints from the room he's taken on the 17th floor. Yeah, well, as soon as you do, nip him over to the American embassy. FBI liaison will get a result in an hour. They have this incredible system. Comes from having a nationwide computer. Yeah, Gav, I know. You reckon our friend's up to something? Ronnie Rich wouldn't come back here for fun. For all he knows, by this time, somebody might have coughed. And we could have a warrant out for his arrest on sight. And have we? Rich has a very good brain. He's a wicked and meticulous planner. Two serious coups. One in Rome, one in Madrid are down to our Ronnie. If Muller's prints tell us he's got form stateside, we have to ask ourselves, what the hell is Ricardo putting together? I don't believe this. I can't actually believe I'm sitting in this car being driven to see some woman in L farm when I've got a business to run. It's 600 quid a day, Danny, plus expenses. Chicken feet. Yeah, well, it may be chicken feed to you, mate. But it's legal chicken feed. Ronnie hasn't set foot in England ever since all those stupid rumours about him and the train job. With all due respect, Mrs. Rich, there were more than rumours. Meaning? A rumour can be given wings by hidden truths, or damn lies taken flight on winds of malice. It's truth. You lost me there, I'm afraid. Um, try some of these dim sum. Soya nectarine. Thank you. Um, what my brother is saying, uh, I think, is that everyone knows that your Ronnie was in on the train robbery, but nobody can prove it. He's a bit of a local hero, I'm sad to say, down rather high. He's been diamond to me, Ronnie has. He set me up with this place. I fly out to his little place in Spain every few weeks. He's a respected man there. He really is. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Yeah, I'm sure he is, yeah. The local mayor's a close friend of his. Mm, I'm not surprised. But there are some people at Scotland Yard that have the knife in for my Ronnie. They've got long memories, you see. And now he comes back just to have his bridge work seen to. Really? Who's his dentist? Arnold Fraser, Wimpole Street. Only the best. <clears throat> and you want us to make sure that he stays out of trouble? I know my Ronnie. He's light of foot and charming to my mother. Ominous signs. It's business, boys. I'll pay you two a lot of money to find out what he's up to. And then? Scotch it. Keep him out of the hands of the law and, uh, I don't know, frighten him off. Send him back safe to the Costa del Sol, a place in the sun. And you did say, um... 600 pounds a day plus expenses. And a five grand bonus if you get him out of it without grief. Oh. Danny. The police would love to put Ronnie Rich away. You get 20 years for dropping litter. Well, I suppose we'd be doing the bloke a favour. Here yeah, right, I am in. Mean, DB investigations at your service. Just hold it there a second. Hmm. Excuse me, miss. You get a stronger pulse here. I always like to take more than one reading. I bet you do. You didn't learn that in the St. John's ambulance, did you? Sorry, this is a private session. I could see that. What the hell are you doing here? You know this bloke? Yes, he's, um, my boyfriend. And he's insanely jealous. Yeah, I am. It's just a standard form of taking the pulse. Wrist or ankle will have to do in the case of Miss... Elmore. In the case of Miss Elmore. Look, it's her money, she's paid for an hour, and I'm just doing my job. 
why don't I give you two lovebirds some time to sort it out between you, right? And saying jealousy is a terrible thing. It certainly explains the tension in Miss Elmore's neck. You've just made me the happiest man in the world. Hold it, hold it, Ruba. You mean you were taking the Mickey? What are you doing here? Driving the bus. He's um, thinking of sending Mrs. Kane here for, uh, you know, tone up. You're a terrible liar for a hoodlum. Sorry, junior management. You're not Miss Elmore. Girl's got to make a living. You gonna blow the whistle on me? Breathe on my spell as your boyfriend has been. I make it, what, the best part of 30 seconds? I have a certain loyalty to all flames. Plus, I have a price. Maybe I should just make a run for it. Have dinner with me. When you're through with whatever it is you're up to. Just dinner. Sure wasn't I brought up to be a credit to Mrs. O'Brady. Thanks. When? I'll find you. See you later. Darling. What do you do then, your boyfriend? He's Daddy Kane's bodyguard. Ah. Here he comes. Well, at least we know he's been to the dentist. Yeah. Just like the lady said. Just a breath of garlic. Well, you ain't one of us, that's for sure. You don't need to know who I am, Nathan. The important thing is I know who you are, and I have a nice little job for you. It's worth seven grand, what do you say? I say ain't enough. Well, of course you would. Where can we talk? Hey, you can talk here, man. They fill it the heat at the door. Do believe I smell worsted and brass. You got blazer buttons? Better just wager, your man, you wearing an old British blazer. Okay, Nathan, what are we talking about? Straight, middle-aged, blazer-wearing English hood. Either is here to waste my time. You don't have to overdo it, Nathan. I know you're good. Oh, he's looking for my skills for something serious. Serious as nine grand ticket to leave it. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Wish I could see you dance, man. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Who the hell's that? Blind Nathan Willis. Tell me about it. Frank? You remember the fire in the Southern House Club? Light fused, mass panic? Well, nine kids died. It could have been a whole lot more, but some blind dude calmed them all down, let them out in the dark through the cellar of the place next door. That was my man, Nathan. What does he do for a living? You heard about the dude they call Spider-Man? Shins down the walls and does over-expensive apartments. My man, Nathan. Why didn't I know all this? 
Perhaps you the wrong color, boss. Never fear. Spider-Man lives. I'll check him out, man. No problem. Tell Frank to scrub it. What's Ronnie up to, then? I don't know. I'm beginning to like it. The Paradise Mob. Danny, the priest, and um, some hoodlum. Frank Kane. Now, why should he get involved? Which particular hoodlum, DC Spink? Name of O'Brady. Tall, wears a gold earring. Wasn't he the one that the you... The one I was in hot pursuit of when I totaled the taxi. Ah, yes. Good-looking chap, if I recall. Nothing special. What do I do for a living? Well, sir, you're a chief superintendent. A detective chief Not one word. Detective. So don't pull the wool. Okay. He's been coming on strong, Chief. Look, I don't want you taking any risks. Oh, I don't know, sir. I think I can probably trust him. As long as he imagines he's, um... Give me the chance. This is official. You take advantage of young Mr. O'Brady. That's what the criminal intelligence is all about. Oh, I better tell you how much a health farm's costing. How much? 700 pounds. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, see you soon, bye. Ronnie's got a meeting set for tomorrow at the Bentic Gallery, according to Mrs. Rich. So where he goes, we go. Mr. Kane? Mr. Kane? What a surprise. I, I didn't know you was into Matisse. Don't get loopy. You were closet culture vulture. Now there's a turn up for the books, eh? Closet snout, more like. Who's your grass off this time? As it happens, Mr. Kane, on my days off, in between my gigs, gardening and uh, garbage retrieval service, I do like to frequent the occasional gallery. It sort of makes my sutra feel calmer. If you know what I mean. Come on, Danny. Let's put it down to coincidence. Oh, and by the way, Ron, that is not a Matisse. That was done by a bloke called Hoped. There's his moniker, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mind you, Frank, I got my uh, moniker here. on the subject and then on this beautifully painted helmet. By the time this portrait was painted, Rembrandt was in his 30s. Can you handle it? I'll need to the see the computer program. Leave it to me. There should be no problem. Why I say all these words for real? 
Is this business or pleasure? Thanks for not dropping me in it the other day. Look, uh, forget about dinner. You have your job to do, I got mine. Just call it quits, okay? I would have kept my word. Oil and water, Constable. Does that mean a dance is out of the question? I don't know. I'd have to ask my mother. From strength to strength Cause I'm truly rooted Yes, I'm suited Oh, I give you five good reasons more And for all those caring and sharing ways you brought Yes, you brought it to my life I can give you twice as much I give you five good. Him and Rich went for a beer when they left the art gallery. I'm gonna draw something on a piece of paper. I don't know, some kind of plan. Then hands it to Rich. My two boys did not want to get any closer, Frank. We're looking at an art theft for sure. You find out where Nathan lived? Come on, Frank, I've had a busy day. Do it now, Joe. Sorry, Captain, I'll get right on it. And put a watch on his place. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I got carried away. Um, have we got enough boss to do that? And cover Ronnie Richard Moore. Pushing it, Frank. Hell. How do they manage in the CID? I've got men on Carrillo, Muller, and Rich. DC Spink tells me the Kane family have been out at Delia Rich's health farm. Jerry, I just don't have the manpower to get a grip on this operation. Muller's got form. FBI just came through. Real name? FBI Special Agent Henry Kenyon Lassiter until three years back, when a security review found it undisclosed assets of $3.7 million. Lassiter refused to explain how he'd acquired the loot and they showed him the door. What did he do at the FBI? Security of sensitive buildings, anti-intruder devices. Oh, nice one, boss. Carrillo gets Ronnie Rich in from the Costa del Watsit. Ex-Special Agent Henry Lassiter flies in from, uh... Miami. So, we're looking at a very delicate robbery. Thought you'd be tucked up in bed by this time, Tilly. There are certain links to which I will not go. He was asking what our interest is in the health farm. One of Kane's men. And you replied? You were watching one of the punters. Well, he seemed to buy it. Yeah, well, he'll tell Danny, rest assured. And Danny Kane is not so dumb. He also showed a serious interest in Ronnie Rich. I tried in his sweet, naive way to find out if we know what Rich is up to. If Danny's involved with Ronnie, John Joe Brady's in blissful ignorance. Actually, that tallies with a whisper I got from the local CID. Do you want to tell us about it, Sergeant? Whiskey, Tilly. No, thanks, really, Chief. A snout reckons that the Kane brothers have gone into the... This'll kill you, Chief. Private investigation business. Target Ronnie Rich. When are you seeing him next? He's asked me to have lunch tomorrow. Or well, today. But I told him I'm early turn. Have, have lunch, lunch with him. him. Mom! Samantha's got my pencil sharpener in a school bag. Don't grass me up, but I grass on you, grass. Come on, you two. You know I don't like you talking like that. Give it back, love. You know it's not nice boring other people's property without asking. Wow, that's rich, isn't it? Terry. Sorry, Dad. How many times do I have to tell you? It's isn't it. Shouldn't it be? It is, isn't it? Shouldn't it be? It is, it's not it. If shouldn't's wrong, then it should be, should not it. All right, it. all right, all right. In future, don't borrow anything and don't grass. Snitch, okay? Yeah, but we're only little kids. Everybody does it, especially with stupid little sisters. Idiot, smelly brothers who grass. Enough. Dad? What? Is it true we're trying to go straight? I've always tried to be straight with you, Terry. Well, good luck. Thanks, pal.
came here for your bridge work. Yeah, what else? Ronnie. Mm. Yeah. See you in about four weeks, eh? Who knows, I've got a new system at the casino. Maybe you could sell up all this and we could go and live somewhere completely new, eh? Oh? Delia. Maybe it's time we got out of Europe. Bala. Oh, thanks, Bill. Leave two men at Heathrow just in case. If Ronnie does turn up, hold him and keep in touch. Charge. Oh, I'll think of something. There's a good lad. We've just lost Lasseter, a bleak muller, rode off into the sunrise. Oh, I love it. And Ronnie Rich did not board flight 363 to Malaga. Maybe we should stick closer to the cane boys. They seem to be having more luck. Just stick to Carrillo, like... Uh, Glue? That should do it. Sir, target Carrillo went into Fortnum's at 930. Delta score covered all exits. He went into a washroom at 939. Never came out. Foxtrot squads made four sweeps of the place. He's disappeared. There are times, Elizabeth, when I feel like taking a job in a car wash. You know you don't mean that. I'm not so bloody sure. Oh, you should have seen it, Danny. It's a beautiful professional move. Talk about timing. <laughs> and the look on the faces of the police who were following him. Good dear. I owe silver away. Yep. Oh, and Ronnie Rich didn't catch the plane to Malaga. Called in to see Delia, said goodbye, then disappeared. Do you know anyone with access to the Malaga flight computer? Well, I know a chap in the Heathrow. Well, plead compassionate grounds. Well, if we can stop our client's beloved from committing a criminal act, then I suppose that is compassionate grounds. Well, in that case, find out if Ronnie Rich has changed his flight. Mm -hmm. If so, when? Mm -hmm. Also, your phantom horseman. Find out if he's booked himself on a flight back to the States in the near future. I'll get right onto it. Danny, it really is a delight to see you doing something legal and exciting. And you really would have made a wonderful frame. Well, I don't suppose the boss would mind me telling you. It's Danny Kane's private eye right enough. See, the old firm is strictly legit these days, and to tell you the truth, it's a relief to all of us. Well, don't you miss the excitement? Of what? I've been a junior executive in the dance hall leisure business. <laughs> The problem is, I really do quite like you. It's doomed, Tilly. You and me. I suppose I'll just have to get used to it. Is it Ronnie Rich you're working on? Never heard of him. Well, suppose I was to ask you what exactly you were doing sussing out the health firm. The only odd thing I found was a receipt for two firemen's uniforms. Okay. Well done, Joe. Stick with him. Rich and the American are with Nathan. Rich's car is full of gear. Tear gas, smoke grenades, two-way switches, electronic timing devices, and two firemen's uniforms. Two firemen's uniforms? Well, no, Constable. It's amazing the things that people get up to in the privacy of their own homes. It's definitely a cape. Hallelujah. And we know where. Ready? Go.
31 seconds. Hey, kid, that's terrific. How about that? When do we do it for real? Put you in place very early tomorrow. Excitement starts at 11.07. Precisely. Grenades, tear gas. Electronic gizmos. Two farmers' outfits. This is one genuine Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, could have fooled me. The job, Frank. I'm talking about the job. Yeah, but I'm just a simple bloke. I mean, can you explain? Well, I'm only as is in the guess. But I should imagine it goes something like this. Smoke and tear gas itself in the main gallery room. Late stuff's very small, like a chocolate bar, easy to get in. Now, you've sussed the place out, Joe. Tell us more. Alarm bell rings. All the doors and corridors are sealed off. Thereby shutting everyone off in the rooms and corridors that they're already in at that moment. The security staff make their way to the main exhibition room. Meanwhile, in another part of the gallery, Nathan spiders his way down from the roof. And relieves the gallery of another masterpiece. The smoke tricks the fire alarms, and the fire brigade gets mixed up with the security and the police, and our friends in the confusion slip off their overcoats and make their getaway dressed as firemen. What about Nathan? Remember those dudes on the roof next door? Yeah. Well, they're players. Right. So what do we do now, boss? Well, we've still got a contract to put the fronters on Ronnie Rich and get him out of the country safely. Yeah, well, he's booked on a flight tomorrow at 4 p.m. Well, it's too late to do the job tonight, so it's got to be tomorrow morning. So what I suggest is that you and Polish put the frighteners on Muller and anybody else that's with him. And um, how? You're the one that's always going on about being a detective. Dressed as a policeman. Yeah. When? Uh, tomorrow, at the art gallery. And you, Danny, uh, what about you? John Joe and I take care of Nathan. Why don't we, John Joe? All right with me, boss. Me, mate. And Mr. Muller, I believe. Well, I'm not with him. Who are you? I'm Detective Chief Superintendent Hare of the Serious Crime Squad. And I've reason to believe that under your raincoats, you're wearing the uniforms of the London Fire Brigade. Can you open your coat, sir? Hey. Come on. We just like dressing up as firemen. Oh, is that a crime? No. But carrying smoke grenades and tear gas canisters most certainly is. Oh, my God. However, I hate paperwork. I'm not with you. Well, I've got a car here. Providing you get in it and I see you get on the next plane to Malaga, we'll say no more. You ain't no goddamn cop. No. But I've got a police whistle. Do you want me to blow it? Get in the goddamn car. £5,000 bonus, honestly earned, and no one broke the law. Kind of gives you this warm feeling inside, eh, Father? Yeah. <laughs> hey, and it's Frank, you know that. Just Frank. Come on. <laughs> hey, £5,000. Whoa. <laughs> there has been a daring robbery at a London art gallery. Police and firemen raced to Bentix this morning as smoke and tear gas filled the interior. The gallery houses priceless paintings, including a Rembrandt, being exhibited in Britain for the first time. After staff and public had been evacuated, it was discovered that although the Rembrandt was safe, a famous Goya, worth an estimated three million pounds, had been cut from its frame.
So you got Ronnie safely out of the country? You're a saint, brother. And you are a two-bit thief. Come on, Frank. Fair's fair, hardly two-bit. It was too good to resist. What's with the suitcase? Are you going somewhere? From whence I came. Danny, I... I thought I could change things around here. But you have. You've changed a lot. Look, I'm just a simple priest. What? Well, I thought you made this place your parish. Yeah. So did I. Listen. The deeds are in the safe. The place is yours. God bless. Frank. Frank! I'll give it back. <laughs>